or when everybody's verdict is that he should uh, he should not act the way he's acting then finally he takes recourse says why are you blaming me i am simply acting according to my nature if anyone is to be blamed blame the creator who gave me my nature <laughs> blame the creator who gave me my nature so uh, i was at a a travel leader cause that leader every
thing is in context just <laughs> attachment and aversion which is situated not come under their control indriya sendriya syate raga dvesha vyavasthita udes they are obstacles on your path paripanthi no means thieves pantha is path pari is stealers so robbers they are thieves on the path of life so just one verse before this krishna is saying you have to control yourself and in fact the whole section after that is about sense control so what you're singing out of tune and you know you're singing out of tune <laughs> but sometimes you don't even know you're singing out of tune <laughs> then what to do <laughs>
and some people they come with a smile and the more people they get, smaller and smaller <laughs> introvert it's very difficult for them to entirely become an extrovert so which means krishna doesn't say that the anger and we try to function with us more than that is a free will so for a child the free will is free but to flow in a way that is dharmic or let it flow
policies and destiny. It's in real life. It's not this. Browser is giving auto complete. Say one.com. Now I'm going to bhagavadgita.com. First aspect is mechanical. Okay, all the Bollywood is coming, is deleted and type Bhagavad Gita. So similarly, mechanically, we a particular thought, a particular desire, a particular prompting will come. But mechanically, it is saying and mechanically push our a change externally externally do it internally i'm not feeling like it mm -hmm. technical change is there and if you delete that as a preference mm -hmm. then if you delete that as a preference if it is saved as a bookmark or something then it may not come that that automatically and the is where we repeatedly choose Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita. When you type B, to my Bhagavad Gita will come. So, to give another example, straight this is say floor. I suppose this floor were inclined like that, and we have electronic equipment over there. So, we don't want water to go. Falls because the floor is inclined. Don't want to work in this direction. We have to do three things. First is redirection. So we have to have some mop or something by which we forcibly push the water. It's only a mechanical process. By the mechanical, we push the water. This thing, redirection. Actually, even before we can do the redirection. We can have a restriction. Okay, build some small tiny wall over there by which even the water is flowing in the direction, it doesn't reach there. So there's a restriction which blocks the flow of the water in that direction. There's redirection which pushes the water in the other direction. And the third sustainable solution would be reconstruction. Just change the floor so that it's flow inclined in this way. That the water will not go in that direction, the water will go in this direction. So, so we could say something similar applies in our inner world also. We often use the word, I've got an inclination for this. Now inclination at a physical level refers to the tilt of a floor or a road. At an inner level also it can mean the same thing. We have inclination means that as soon as we have some, as soon as we have nothing to do, our thoughts are inclined toward that. Some people have an inclination, as soon as they get some free time, let me look at the news. Let me let me watch some sports. Let me watch some movies. Let me do this. We all have certain inclinations like that. So those are inclinations means uh, one way, simple way to know our inclination is to see what we do when we have nothing to do. <laughs> that shows our default, uh, our inclinations, our attachments. That shows where our consciousness flows. So then 
if we know it's going to flow in this direction then create some restriction restriction means just say if somebody is an alcoholic and they want to give up alcohol suppose their house is right next to a bar then no matter how much willpower they exercise it's going to be very difficult so restriction create some distance don't stay they have to change your house or do something like that by which the when the desire prop, pops up the desire pops up then okay i'm not going to do this for us to think about that and to decide that also takes time but if there is no restriction then the desire pops up and we do it and it's done already so the desire to drink comes and the bar next day we just go so that's how it happens so <clears throat> in that case create some restriction so this is not how i want to act now restriction could also mean restrict in terms of whom we associate with now duryodhan if you go back to the starting point of this duryodhan had a demonic nature right from birth so some part of it was destined it was destined, not exactly destined but there was a disease in him he had that envy he had that greed he had that uh, dark impressions within him right So there was a lot of inauspiciousness when he was born, but that did not mean the disease. He had to go to a destiny. But what happened? Instead of restricting, he actually indulged. Oh, he there was nobody to. So either we have to restrict ourselves, or we need someone to restrict us. But Dhritarashtra was able to restrict him, and Bhishma and Drona, although they were, Bhishma was a great soul, Vidura was a great soul, he did not value them. And instead, he valued the association of Shakuni. Shakuni was a person who, instead of building a fence, building a fence, breaking the fence, just become gave more and more ideas about how to be envious, how to be vicious, how to be malicious, and then without the restriction, just ruined himself by that. So restriction, then redirection. Redirection means whenever a consciousness. Is going in a particular direction. I'm just saying no. I will not do this. I will not do this. That is very difficult. It's like the water is flowing in this direction. You tell the water, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. It's no use. The water is going to flow in that direction. So we need something that we can do by which our thoughts can go elsewhere. So usually, if we consider our life, there are certain things which we like to do. and certain things which are good for us and often these two circles we may think that they are completely non overlapping but it's not that they are entirely non intersecting some places it intersects so we may like music and the spiritual music so we may like any kind of music but spiritual music may be good for us so we find out something which is at the intersection of the two and that comes like our mop for pushing when our consciousness starts going in a particular direction if i just say i'll not think about this i'll not do this that will not work for long we will say i will not do it i will not do it and our mind will come quietly with a eraser it will come with a eraser and it will erase the not i will not do it i will not do it i will do it <laughs> so therefore what we need to do is we need to have something else to do something to push the water and each of us find what that will be for us now of course we can say it like chanting and chanting is the but at that moment that doesn't consume our capture our consciousness as an engage our consciousness then what happens is it's like we have the mop we are pushing the mop the water is going here and we are pushing the mop <laughs> it doesn't process of raising our consciousness toward krishna but chanting has to engage with our consciousness if it is not if our consciousness is not involved in chanting then the then the mind is then the is it uttering so what happens the tongue is tongue is chanting the mind is wandering and the soul is thinking which goes <laughs> the soul goes with the mind so we need something which pushes Add the last. What is the last part? Do you remember? Restriction, redirection, and reconstruction. Yes, reconstruction.
instruction means gradually if we keep doing the right thing we keep practicing bhakti by that fresh habits will develop and once the habits develop then the water of our consciousness will naturally flow in a healthy way and that's why actually at one level good habits they often seem very difficult to develop and we may do it for a day or two or three or four or five but there's so much struggle in world i have to struggle like this for the rest of my life How can i do it it's too much for me so it's that like that yes there's some more struggle but gradually as the habits develop the habit starts to against us right now when we are trying to develop a good habit the bad habit is working against Or basically, our habits are working against us because right now we have bad habit. But if you just keep doing repeatedly, gradually develop a habit. It's like I type B each time Bollywood comes, but I keep typing B and type B doing Bhagavad Gita. Then gradually Bhagavad Gita will come, and once it comes over there, that's how we get transformed. To free will, what do we need to do? We need to acknowledge something. I can't change. I don't assume everything is just right, and when we are doing something, don't assume that everything is just a decision. To recognize that something maybe this is for, and then to choose which. When we are trying to change ourselves, when we are trying to free our free will, let's begin with what we think is achievable. Okay, this, you know, this. I no, I want to wake up in the morning. But I want to read Bhagavatam every day. I want to read Shastra every day. Okay, that I can do. Maybe at least ten minutes I can do. So compare it. Waking up in the morning is impossible. I say this. So we start with that which falls in the category of decision. And then, as we can do it, as we see us changing, that also increases our confidence. And it's not just our confidence, in our capacity. When we are practicing the process of bhakti, it's also our confidence in the process of bhakti. because when we are trying to now all that i talked about till now was more or less mechanical but when we start practicing bhakti we are connecting with krishna and krishna what he does is if he sees that we want to change if he sees that we want to cultivate the positive impressions we want to eliminate the negative impressions then he can work much faster than what we can so we just show him i want to do this and he will use the his abilities to both on one side power our right decisions and empower our consciousness and thus transformation at one level anybody can do it if they just apply the process it's created a new habit but with respect to bhakti it's not just we cultivating a new habit it is krishna empowering us so in cultivating any new habit is difficult it's like lifting a heavy weight and it requires effort but when we practice bhakti it's like the process of bhakti is like a lever when we use that lever then also we have to exercise we have to use our energy exert our energy to lift the weight but by a lever if i can lift a 20 kg weight but if i have a lever with applying a weight of the lever i can be able to lift a kg weight so bhakti is like that lever we also have to apply ourselves in bhakti but in terms of effort and returns uh, if instead of trying ourselves without having god in our lives without having krishna in our lives if we bring krishna into our lives and try to connect with him so the good habit that we develop is not just some good habit at a material level the good habit of connecting with krishna then he will empower our free will and he will he, he will empower our decision and he will disempower the unhealthy impressions and that's how transformation can be much faster and all of us can free our free will more and more so that we can freely live the life that we want us to live a life where whatever ability we have whatever resources we have we use them fully to make contribution in the world use them fully to bring about and ultimately to be united with him in his eternal abode so i'll summarize what i spoke today i spoke <clears throat> on the topic of 
how free is our free will so i started by quoting duryodhana's example duryodhana said this is just my nature the way i am why are you blaming me blame the creator so then we discussed is it that the way we are is what that that's what in your god has made us the categories what are the three categories this is disease and destiny yeah so now some people may say that you are you are alcoholic you are deciding to that so yes that is true but everybody when we keep doing something it doesn't remain a decision krishna talks about karma self destructive desire first he says you have to give up karma that means he talking about decision make the decision but then he also say independent of decision that desire is present in your mind that means it's a impression so like somebody is browsing some sites which they don't want to browse then they have to make a decision but if the decision is not in if they have the preferences are already stored over there so there is something which is independent of our decision which might be present in some and not present in others that indicates it's a disease now for non alcoholics the idea of drinking might not come but for alcoholics it might come as a very strong proposition and then some if they just keep and even when the disease it can go to a death it might appear as if it just not changeable so then i talked about what are some things about us not changeable yes we discussed how we have our core swabhava like brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra or we talk in terms of introvert extrovert certain changes might be in terms of abilities some people may just not have particular abilities but those don't define us primarily krishna says don't nigraha kim karish as you have to change consciously don't go on that channel but let it go in a regulated for you know kshatriya krishna told him you can't become a brahmana but be a, a virtuous kshatriya Our battles. This is or this is not worth trying to change it. So we keep that for timing, and then we look at things which can be changed. And for changing, we are talking about restriction, redirection, reconstruction. Yeah, that restriction means that provokes us. that we don't go in that direction the alcoholic is stay close to a, somebody has somebody has diabetes they want to you can sugar don't keep sweets right close to you the restriction then redirection is like the water is flowing in the direction create a wall then push the water so for pushing the water in another direction we need to find something which is good and which we like to do it's only good but we don't like to wait then we won't get engaged in it and it is we are pushing them off and the water is flowing in the opposite direction still from elsewhere because they are pushing elsewhere so we need to find out some activity which can engage our consciousness and then push us we can use that whenever the push push it using that activity that's the concrete direction gradness reconstruction Just like somebody chooses Bhagavad Gita, I talked about the browser. I talked about mechanical, technical, and uh, so mechanical is just don't visit that site even if it pops up. Technical is change the preferences, and transformational is just the by repeated habit the old preference doesn't come at all. So if we keep doing the right thing, gradually the floor of our consciousness will become inclined differently. And once it inclined positively. then now the good habit which seems requiring a lot of effort to develop will become easier and easier and we could say this process can be done anybody who is not spiritual also but if we are spiritually if we are connected with krishna then krishna empowers us to make the right decisions and krishna disempowers the negative the wrong impressions within us and thus by krishna's grace it becomes much easier to free our free will it is like lifting a heavy weight that's how changing ourselves is but bhakti is like a lever by which the same effort can give us much greater returns so to say that everything about me is destined as duryodhan was saying saying is irresponsible to say everything about someone is a decision that is being insensitive that is being unrealistic 
We have to say, okay, some things are distant, leave them as they are. Some things, so we start with that which we, f we think is doable for us, is a decision, and start doing that and as our confidence in ourselves and in the process of bhakti to transform us increases, then that which is a disease can also be transformed. So thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments? Yes. yes. We always talk about, um, when, we go talk, when we talk about uh, decision disease and uh, destiny, yes. you're all, we're always talking about negative things like drugs, alcohol, no life. What about workaholics? What about those people that work 10 hours a day, seven days a week, they miss out on enjoyment of life, they miss out on family, they miss out on taking care of themselves, they miss out on, you know, just general, general that's true. life things that we go through. We never talk about, you know, stuff that seems in a positive way. Like oh, yeah. You, could, you might be, you know, a nuclear scientist trying to figure out how to, how to split the atom in a completely different way. That's true. Yes, we don't talk about workaholism so much, only about negative things like alcoholism. Yeah, workaholism is has been called as the prestigious addiction. <laughs> Normally, addict somebody's addict, people look down upon them. Somebody's alcoholic, drug addict, but workaholism is a prestigious addiction. In society, if somebody works very hard, I have never taken a leave for the last ten years. Oh, how dedicated you are! Now, of course, we, we are not recommending being irresponsible over here, but the point is that a lot of our, a lot of how we live is shaped by the people around us. And if the people around us are, peop are people who are work workaholics, then our life becomes like a competition among workaholics. And then in order to feel valued, to feel respected, we will have to become a bigger workaholic than others. So that we need to, uh, we need to have the association of people who are not like that. Yes, it can. Work is important in life, but when work it becomes workaholism, that is when it is become like a cancer. This is this is how we can also understand the difference between ambition and greed. Ambition is natural. Everybody has ambition. Everybody wants to grow in their lives. So it's like all of us were simple one cell unicellular organisms at one time. And now we are grown up to be fully grown human beings. Millions of billions of cells in our body. That's, that's it's natural that we grow. However, cancer is also growth. But cancer is growth that is disproportionate and destructive. So similarly, for all of us, we want to grow. We want to grow physically, we want to grow socially, have more relationship, no more people, we want to grow financially, we want to grow in grow spiritually, we want to grow in all walks of life. And that's natural. Growth is a normal condition of life. But what is normal is proportionate growth, not disproportionate growth. So when somebody becomes so obsessed with their job that, that they neglect their family, they neglect their health, they neglect their spirituality, then that they may be growing in their career. But that is like cancerous growth. It grows and it, it can look very impressive for people. But some people who are phenomenally successful in their lives, they are also tragically lonely because they've just had no time to invest in any relationships. And sometimes you might get to the top and you have a big house, but the big house only offers you the privilege of a lot of place in which to feel lonely. <laughs> so what is the use of that? So yes, that's also an addiction and that we need to guard against it. Can I answer your question? What was, was that your question or your question was something else? I'm going to say you've, you've answered my question. Are there, are there other levels to it and I'm still questioning? Yes, but that might, that might be too, uh, too much of a question for right now. Sure, you can ask, no problem. Want to think about it? We can come back to you. Please. Sure. Any other questions? Any comments, Prabhu? Oh, there's so many things. I liked your class very much. Uh, 
a lot more about us is changeable than what we think is but sometimes the effort required for that might be so much that it may just discourage people so in the bhagavad gita's context if we consider overall the mahabharat and the bhagavad gita when the pandavas were living in the forest they were living like brahmanas in fact the first time when they went to the forest they lived as guys themselves as brahmanas at that time when uh, they were attempted to be burnt and uh, so you at least that it was not just for a, it was for for more than a few days it was months or years uh, when and the second time also when they lived into the forest largely they were living like brahmanas they were sitting and uh, do hearing some spiritual subject matters and of course they would go out and sometimes eliminate some demons but that was only occasional so they were not really ruling a kingdom so they had that brahmanical uh, they could be brahmanas if they wanted to be so in that sense we could say that in the context of the bhagavad gita what krishna is telling arjuna is that your basic disposition is a kshatriya and that was also what was required for him to do dharma at that time his dharma his duty was to establish law and order in society and for that he had to fight against those who were disrupting the law and order and if at that time he starts acting as a brahmana then that will not work now if say some crazed gunman is going around shooting people indiscriminately and then the police come with a gun and the police say you know actually i cannot kill anyone i want to be non violent well you may want to be non violent but being non violent in when, when you are expected to stop the no, violent that is actually violence so in that context what krishna told is you cannot act like a brahmana over here so uh, 
Now Vishwamitra did change, but it was a long, long effort for him. It took years and years of seclusion and purification and spiritual practices that helped him to do that. So is something entirely unchangeable for someone? Now, it's my understanding is that the most important thing that we need for changing ourselves is encouragement. The confidence that I can do it. And if we start with that part of us which seems most difficult to change, then most often we get so discouraged that we just fail. We, many people just give up trying to change for the better. So in that sense, for argument's sake, we could say, okay, maybe this is this time for me. And and can people change? Well, I have seen it both ways, and probably you have also. Like some devotees, when they come initially, they are like rough and tough and brash. And then as they start practicing bhakti, they become soft and gentle. And there are some devotees, they are practicing bhakti, but they keep practicing their rough and tough way only. So now, is it that bhakti is working for this person, not working for that person? I wouldn't, if somebody is practicing, and sometimes maybe say both of them are dedicated devotees. So, it's, it's very difficult to say in advance uh, which part of us or which part of someone is changeable and which part is not changeable. In, th in principle, we could say that by Krishna's grace, by one's own determination, we can change everything. But if something is not changing that easily, we shouldn't get so obsessed with that that we just lose hope. Prabhupada says in the seventh canto purport that we should always stay healthy, he says we should always stay stout and healthy in mind and intelligence to focus on the purpose of life amidst a life full of problems. There are many problems and not solving all problems will lead to the full furthering the purpose of life. So what is the problem that I should focus on right now? That we have to choose our battles. So somebody may be a Vaishya and they have, a, they just can't think of, they can't not think of money. If you tell somebody as a Vaishya, you become a Brahmana and then you become a devotee. Then for them to live very simply without much money, that might cause them so much torment. That they may just, I can't, they, they may just feel Bhakti is impossible for them. But okay, you just be a Vaishya, you want to earn money, you earn a lot, but develop a charitable spirit, give charity also. Then that will give them much more satisfaction and they will feel energized by that. Yes, I will earn, I will give a lot of charity, like that. So rather than telling them just don't earn money, so for a Vaishya to become a Brahmana uh, might be much more difficult than for a Vaishya to act as a Vaishya and serve Krishna. So in that sense, it's best that each person maybe with their guides finds out what is the, what is the part of them that is changeable and work on that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So, yes. So I have just one question is how do we know what is our intrinsic behavior by nature? Because many many students right uh, they take medical and after some time they leave and then they join some other thing. So if if by when we are growing up we know what is our intrinsic behavior, we can just follow that line along. Mm. If while growing up we knew what was our nature. We could just move along that. Yes, if life were so easy. <laughs> I was in Stanford and I will give a lecture after that one American lady came with her daughter and she said daughter has been 12 years in the first year in Stanford. I said why 12 years? He said she had not failed for 12 years. She's a brilliant student. To get into Stanford itself requires brilliance. But 12 years, she had been changing her major to find out what is her calling. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, maybe it's engineering, maybe it's medicine, maybe it's humanities, maybe it's this. For 12 years, she had been changing. So, sometimes that, that I want to find my calling, that can become an obsession for people. So, it's very, very difficult to find the perfect fit. Sometimes we just have to make, we can't wait to find the best. We have to choose the best among what is available for us. So, 
if we could know our nature that's great but if we can't then just choose whatever is the best among the options available and later on as we understand ourselves better we can we can mo we can do some course correction so this whole idea that if even devotees they want to, i want to serve according to my nature okay and what is my nature if you ask your mind the mind will say whatever you are doing right now that is not your nature <laughs> oh, this service is too difficult that service is too difficult this is not my nature so it's it actually requires some amount of maturity some amount of even purification before we can understand ourselves so it's best that we just keep doing what we are doing right now we given a service do that service if you are in a career continue that career but develop the habit of self observation self observation means while we are doing whatever we are doing observe yourself there are some things which we feel good while doing and there are some things which we are good at doing two things i might feel good very good playing kirtan but if i am bad at it then that's not so good so there is the guna karma vibhaga shah that means guna refers to quality and activity so the way i put it is guna refers to our comfort when we are doing something i feel comfortable doing it and karma refers to competence so while we are going about in our life doing our services pursuing our career look at what we are comfortable doing and look at what we are competent at doing and then gradually we can move in that direction some people may be fortunate and they might just come to know their calling very early in their lives some people might not find one calling but within whatever they are doing they start gravitating towards something which they are better at somebody might say be in software but in software they might find that uh, okay i'm better at not so much at coding but as, as leading a team then their work is not so technical it is more of relational some people say no this is relationship i just want to do my coding so while doing our work also in our particular career we can gravitate in a direction that we are comfortable and competent at that is the that is the healthiest way instead of just waiting for somebody or some event to mystically tell us that this is your nature i want to ask a question okay yes so you have got it i would i would ask some people seem to never find their nature and i think Pr- prabhuji's question was more or less how do we shorten the time from when we ask the question to where we achieve what is naturally our nature okay how do we is that is that correct prabhuji yeah. that's what i thought yeah. you were asking how, how do we shorten it because prabhuji said it sometimes it, it can take long <laughs> 12 <laughs> years no, generation <laughs> how how many people have you know have passed without ever having achieved what they truly wanted to whether it was not physically available to them for one reason or another or they never quite figured it out but so let's shorten the time from when i'm a teenager to when i'm a young you know a young adult i want to know by then so i can so i can perfect myself in in my according to my own nature yeah so how can we shorten the time by which we can understand our nature and then live accordingly otherwise our whole life may go and so many people may have lived like that yeah it's as i said it's tough but bro- gradually but broadly if we develop the habit of self observation we can learn it better see like this particular girl she she wasted 12 years of her life trying to find her nature and she was i just want to perfect but 12 years have gone that's way way too much time so somebody will say no what is the use of going through a career if i study for 4 years and that is not my nature i waste my time so broadly speaking you know there are certain structures in life mm-hmm. and uh those who are hari krishna there are broadly there are, there are two kinds of people because there are conservatives and there are liberals the conservatives feel that the structures are good don't mess with the structures mm-hmm. the structures have helped people live and grow in their lives go along with those structures mm-hmm. so the exe for example is somebody chosen a particular career somebody might choose engineering 
Now, even if they don't feel any calling for engineering, but at least they get a graduation, they get a job, they move on with life, and then uh, maybe as they move forward, they will discover, okay, actually, you know, this is not exactly what I want to do, this is what I want to do. So, the, the conservatives are generally the people who say that go along with the existing structures in life. The liberals are saying this, these structures are repressive, just reject those structures. No, just find yourself what you want to do and do it. And it is possible that sometimes the structures are repressive. However, no, it is not that the structures are always repressive. And somebody who rejects the structure, they are left all to themselves. And actually, you could say, too much freedom can also be too much of a burden. Why? Suppose I go to a supermarket, I want to buy a toothpaste. And there are 300 options of the toothpaste. Now, if I decide I want to buy the best toothpaste, <laughs> the maximum value for money, and then I go through all the features of the 300 toothpastes, you know, probably it will take me days upon days to find that. I just take whatever is the best and move on. So, we cannot we cannot afford to wait for the best in every area of our life. You have to whatever is there, there is whatever works, just move on. So now there is as it, the liberals, they just say the structure, just give it up. I want to find out my call. I want to find out what is what what works for me and move on. Now some people, for them, the structure might restrict them, and for them, we need flexibility within the structure. But for some people, the absence of the structure can be very, very chaotic. So who is right? Are the conservatives right or the liberals right? It depends. It depends on what the structure is doing and what it is not doing. If the structure is bringing some order in an entirely disorderly life, then that structure is positive. But if that structure is preventing someone from doing that which they are good at doing, which they want to do, they are good at doing, but they are stopped from that, then the structure is not good. So, we all start, it is good to start with some structure in our life. Say we have parents, parents engage, engage us to follow a particular path, and at a particular point we will feel, okay, this structure is not working for me, we might choose something else. But the blanket rejection of structures as repressive or restrictive, that leads not to freedom but to chaos. So for each one of us, we may have to decide that this area of my life, I want to have some structure in it. Because if there is no structure, we, we will not be able to do anything. So this area of my life, I will keep the structure. So okay, maybe I want to have a I want to have a job by which I can earn my living. So at least I'm not every day worried about how I earn my living. Where will my, the bread on my table come from? But along uh, along with that, maybe I'll keep this this much time or this much area of my life free, where I will do what what, what I think is my longing right now. And gradually we start evolving. Is, is this right? Is this right? Is, does this work for me? Does this work for me? So we can't have too much structure because then we will feel choked. But if we can't, if we have no structure, then we will feel choked in another way. We will choke not by the lack of op options, but by the excess of options. And generally, if there are excess of options, what the mind does is, the mind just chooses the path of least resistance. So at least this girl, she, uh, she was in Stanford, and she was studying and continuing different words. Some people may say, oh, this is not my calling, this is not my calling, this is not my calling. So what do I do? I just wake up and spend whole day playing video games at home or playing uh, surfing. You know, I don't know what my calling is. So let me, I, I don't know what my calling is, but my social media is calling me now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not easy. But if we develop a habit of self-observation, give some room for ourselves to be ourselves and also give some room for some structure to shape us. It is not that we do not need shaping, we all need shaping. Because even if we have some talent, the talent also requires discipline, dedication to develop that talent. So, 
if somebody has the discipline and education to go through a structured process that will prepare them for the life of freedom when they can have that habit of structured discipline to move forward in life so self observation along with some level of structure is the best we can have and it's not that if we don't find our calling that means our life is entirely lost if we just keep waiting to find our calling then also our life may be lost to start with what you have and then work towards improving as just work toward orienting that life in a way that is in harmony with what we want to do okay so okay so yes That's true. Time yeah. Is too short. Yeah. yeah. Why hanker for something material? Just you can focus toward Krishna. Yes, that's true. See, again, this is also dependent on person. For some people, there might just be no need for all this, but others may not be like that. Again, we can't just forget it. Some people may feel I want to do something worthwhile, and if they have that feeling, we can't just dismiss it. Oh, you are just material attached or something like that. But then it, we have to come back for that desire, right? So, say if I'm a doctor and I want to become yeah so so uh, see that way that that, that way so also so no so that's why there are different degrees uh, what do i mean by different degrees that some desires just fulfill them and get them over with so for example i have a desire to say eat halwa today i have the desire i cook halwa i eat halwa and it's over it's gone so some desires we deal just by fulfilling them they're small desires minor desires some desires we to fulfill them requires a lot of effort and we decide is it really worth it some desires we decide although it's coming i neglect it no i can't do this i have to tolerate it i have to get over this so now which desire uh, falls in the category of just fulfill it and move on just neglect it and move on or you know i have to work to fulfill this it will vary from people to person to person so generally if we can have the worldly desires in the third category we just forget it and move on that's good but it may not be possible for everyone and when it is not possible then they may not be able to practice bhakti with the same level and level of intensity that others are practicing but then that's what they need to do to come to uh, to come to the level of practicing bhakti seriously so yes if if we get too caught in trying to find the the perfect uh, perfect material situation the or perfect material vocation or even the perfect material relationship it just not going to work i was in one place and this young one young boy he was just uh, he was like maybe i'm not 37 38 and he said last 12 years i've been trying i'm not getting married I'm very frustrated by that So then I asked his counselor. Oh, you know, he is very well educated. He is from IIT in India, and he is working in America. Very well to do, and quite everything was good about him, relatively speaking. So he told me, his counselor told me, that he wants a wife who has the looks of a beauty queen and the heart of a devahuti. <laughs> <laughs> so if he wants, you are not going to get like that in the material world. <laughs> so if we keep waiting for the something which is perfect is never going to come so we have to move with whatever is optimal so that's true but what is optimal may vary from person to person but yeah we have to uh, this is it i put enough time in this let me move on now that's all right. yes for you uh, i guess it you just remind me of uh, something once this this one the body proper disciple who wants to get married he's been wanting to get married for so long and the runjan swami my us three were in with you know maharaj's room and he looked on his computer and he was saying he's looking for one of his disciples you know and he starts describing this woman and she's like really perfect and he says oh the only problem is 
She is already taken by Krishna. Her name is Radharani. <laughs> God, beautiful. So we la- can talk personally. So thank you, thank you very much. Shri Prabhupa Dekhi, Gaur Bhakta Vrindhi, Nitai Gaur Premanande.